So we are now going to switch gears and we are going to move to the next session, which follows on from the science, to move to the science and innovation and technology around this topic. And there's nobody better to moderate this panel than, than somebody who is a friend and a fellow member of the 10 member group that was mentioned earlier, uh, Dr. Jose Ramon Portillo. So please, Dr. Portillo. Thank you very, very much, Vaughn. And uh, really congratulations and thank you to uh, the previous panel, uh, to all my friends, and Christina, and of course, Professor Ada Yonat and uh, Dr. Tso. Uh, I mean, they, 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 they did a fantastic job. And um, now it's time to look into uh, technology innovation and COVID-19 uh, response. We have a four um, a member panel here. Uh, Dr. Kira Radinsky, chairperson and uh, CTO of Diagnostic uh, Robotics. Dr. Genia Dana, head of precision medicine for the uh, World Economic Forum, Biotech Re uh, Regenerative. Uh, Mr. David Antwi Ofori, Head of Operations, Accra Digital Center, Executive Director, Ghana Oracle Digital Enterprise Program, and Mr. Daniel Burka, Director of Product and Design Resolve to Save Lives. What will happen is um, I will make a, uh, an introduction to, to the subject, uh, putting together my own thoughts, and later I will give the floor to each of the panelists uh, for about six minutes. Uh, immediately after that, uh, we will follow um, with um, interventions or questions by VIP, who will be joining uh, by video. <clears throat> and of course, uh, there's going to be a session of uh, questions and answers um, that um, will hopefully draw on the inputs uh, given, given to them. To finalize at 12.40 uh, with a, uh, an, an answer of one minute by the panelists. So um, I, I wish to, to, to um, present this uh, in, in, a, in a comprehensive way. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has proven uh, the vital role of science, of science diplomacy, as, as it has been stressed in the last uh, meeting, technological progress and innovation in fighting existential risks and easing the perennial burdens of humanity. It has raised awareness of the role of diplomacy in fostering innovation and of the need for global cooperation and coordination directed by a robust and functional multilateralism. All this has helped to narrow the gap between our awareness of the problems we face and the innovative technological solutions at hand. Combating the pandemic requires well-organized and effective state intervention as we have proven and demands a more adaptive governance and regulatory framework, particularly for preventing and responding uh, to future emergency situations, including bioterrorism. How can we boost our preparedness for overcoming medium-term health and sanitary bottlenecks uh, derived from COVID-19? Well, an important example is the need to focus on creating the capacity to develop, manufacture, distribute, and regulate future vaccines Equitable, equitably and universally. In this regard, I want to stress uh, the importance of uh, UN Resolution 74, 274 presented by Mexico that um, hopefully uh, uh, it will cover the, uh, uh, this uh, subject. We should think about establishing global early warning systems and protocols to contain and respond to future eventualities in a timely fashion, but without forgetting the more devastating uh, dynamics that can lead to global catastrophic risks like global warming, environmental collapse, extreme inequality, and new types of warfare. The crisis caused by the coronavirus will leave the world economy weakened. Globalization and its principle will be put or are being put to the test. Chains of production and services will be altered based on the logic of national security over commercial efficiency. Various markets will evaporate internationally and nationally with this, many companies will disappear and others will probably emerge or become stronger, particularly digital ones and leaders in frontier technologies. The pandemic has exposed uh, the um, uh, dangerous uh, asymmetries between countries and uh, regions in their capacity to monitor and handle the pandemic and its socioeconomic impact. This creates an obvious problem because 
It has been pointed out repeatedly, if the virus survives anywhere, it becomes potential risk everywhere. A key issue then is how should the world respond to help reduce these institutional, technological, educational, research development and, in, uh, and innovation heterogeneities? Well, the pandemic has led many to argue that a new normal will emerge at the global and national levels. Uh, the digital revolution is likely to accelerate and many forms of permanent social distancing systems may prevail. Although gregarious working conditions are difficult to substitute, as isolation seems to have a negative impact on productivity, on mental health, as it's going to be seen in a moment, abuse, gender discrimination, and domestic violence. So the benefits of these trends towards more intense digitalization of our lives seem to favor large corporations and the most technologically advanced countries. The digital divide that already threatens the most vulnerable may get worse in this new normal, such as turning many into so-called digital slaves, exacerbating extreme inequalities and leaving many countries and groups of people that are not technologically competitive in a state of disadvantage or worse, irrelevance. Similarly, since the onset of the pandemic, AI-infused technologies have been employed to mitigate the spread of viruses has been uh, just uh, uh, presented in a moment ago. Companies that survive the crisis may choose to further automate uh, their activities, bringing robots, chatbots, robotic telepresence platforms, and other AI systems into play, thus intensifying certain types of jobs displacement. Nevertheless, we can still steer these changes towards a, the better good. Many argue in favor of extending the digitization of economic activities, leaving no one behind, which involves accelerating smart, universal, and affordable digital inter interconnectivity and skills for permanent remote office work and meetings, for purchase, sale, and digital log logistics systems, for news generation, financial activities, virtual tourism, medical diagnosis, and you name it. This requires a more robust and responsive governance everywhere boosting infrastructure capacity building for the common global good, putting greater emphasis on R&D and innovation capabilities, expanding business intelligence and supporting innovative impact entrepreneurship. Uh, to control COVID-19, many have advocated for a free flow of relevant medical data and information and different types of enforceable test track and trace programs. There are convincing examples of how good preparation and early action can save lives and ease the economic burden by making exit strategies more efficient and flexible. They also show the power of technology in bringing together large amounts of information from uh, genetic to circumstantial and in mining it effectively. This could help design better sanitary strategies, more efficient uh, management of health procedures, uh, personnel, installations, equipment, and resources, and the right balance between the health of the citizens and the health of the economy. There are, of course, many further questions to be answered, like, and I just mentioned a few, um, how to join forces to develop and distribute accessible testing tools for all, what are the main genetic and environmental risk factors, how can innovation in the treatment of chronic disease intersect with COVID-19 treatments to reduce the, the lethality and help uh, develop a vaccine? How can you keep digital apps and, and tools uh, uh, simple and focused on their users during the COVID response uh, without, of course, in, intruding in privacy and human rights? Can technology replace the human element of patient care during the COVID uh, response and future eventualities? These and other issues need to be urgently answered. Some will be touched in this session. I, I just wish to finish with some final longer term reflections. The pandemic has exposed multiple social and political consequences. Once the precedent for the health focused surveillance is established, it might be very difficult to remove that power from governments, companies, and others. As governments or the public sphere uh, draw analogies between the current crisis and other threats to society that might seek to address these 
through similar uh, solutions. Uh, for example, I mean, social and political unrest or the search in criminality could trigger AI-supported surveillance of individuals and organizations, which could translate to more authoritarian practices and political and social control in many countries. I think we should all be very vigilant in the future of these developments. Well, okay, I've extended myself a little bit, um, uh, but now I think it's time to give uh, uh, the word to Dr. Kira Radinsky. Please, you have the floor. <laughs> 